Welcome to this screencast on configuring MySQL schema mapping with files. The interactions coming from the DataSift platform contain fields which must be mapped to the fields in the MySQL database. There are two ways of doing this, either write an any file which defines the mappings, or use the DataSift SQL schema mapper application, which builds the mappings graphically and outputs the any file. This screencast covers writing the any file yourself. Let's open a text editor and start with a really simple example. The first line defines which table to write data to. In our case, we'll use a table called Twitter. The first type of mapping simply defines the field name in the table and the name of the JSON attribute to be mapped to that field. In this example, interaction underscore ID is the database table field name and interaction.id is the attribute name from the JSON data sent by the DataSift platform. So that's the field name on the left and the interaction attribute name on the right. I'll do the same thing with the interaction type. Both of these attributes are strings and they're written to the database as strings. Let's look at some other data types. Sometimes you'll want to specify the data type when values are being written to the database. In this example, the Twitter user follower ratio is a floating point number in the JSON from DataSift, but we want an integer in our database. You could specify the data type for every field if you wanted to be sure of exactly which type is in your database. In this next example, hashtags are to be stored as a string array in the database. Now let's take a look at transforms. The datetime transform takes the input datetime format, which may be any one of a number of formats depending on the source being used, and transforms it to the database's own datetime format. In this example, the retweet ID is transformed from an integer to a true or false value. That's transforms, and there's more information about those in the documentation. Now let's look at iterators. There are several types of iterator, and they all process arrays of strings or integers in the JSON, mapping the contents to database fields. I'll use the simplest one as an example, which is the list iterator. Here's part of an interaction in JSON. You can see this is hashtags, which may have multiple values in an array. Back in the ini file, I need to define an iterator to iterate through the array, mapping the values to fields in the database. I'll start with the table name, in this case it's links, and define it as a list iterator for the interaction.hashtags attribute. And I'll specify a field with which I can match records in this table to records in the main table. I'll use interaction ID. And then a field for the hashtag value which comes from the iterator. For information on other types of iterator, take a look at the documentation on any files. Lastly, let's look at conditions. Imagine we have an interaction with this in the JSON. You can see there are tags which have either a string or a float data type. We need to use conditions so we can say if the value is float, then map it to one field, or if the value is string, we should map it to a different field. Let's see how that would look in the ini file. As before, we'll start with a table name, and because this is a tree of attributes and values, we're using a tree iterator to look at the interaction.tag underscore tree in the JSON. And I'll specify a field with which I can match records in this table to records in the main table. We'll add the created at database field with the transformation to the database's datetime format, and we'll add a tag name database field, which is the iterated path to the values. Now we can start with the conditions. In this example, if the value is a float, then it's mapped to tag value float. And if the value is an array of strings, then it's mapped to tag value array. Okay, that's our example any file, and hopefully, with the help of our documentation, you'll be able to write your own now. However, you may find it easier to use some of our examples in GitHub. From the DataSift push schemas repository, I'll go to augmentations, and I'll take a look under interaction. Here we can find pre-written ini files, I'll click on mapping.ini, which you can use or modify yourself. Thanks for watching this screencast and look out for more which cover how to use the mapping file when configuring a MySQL destination and a GUI front end called SQL Schema Mapper which simplifies the task of creating and editing ini files.